All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about earthquakes and should be a very fun lesson. My name is Jason Fraser. I'm a meteorologist with the NBC affiliate in Cleveland, Ohio, and I want to thank you for joining me. So as always, with our weather lessons, we begin with something funny. And here's our joke for today. So what do snowmen eat for lunch? Ready? Three, two, one. Iceburgers! Get it? Iceburgers, Mr. Schumann. All right. They don't pay me for telling jokes. But as always, I love your weather questions. You can feel free to send me an email to jfrazer at wkyc.com, or you can always feel free to leave me a comment right below this video here, or you can always feel free to send me a message on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Jason Fraser TV. So here is our class outline for today. We're going to be discussing exactly what are earthquakes and why do they happen? And if for some reason an earthquake happens in your area, what should you do? So, so let's first discuss what exactly is an earthquake? Well, an earthquake is a violent shaking of the Earth's surface due to tectonic plates. So that basically means if you were standing in a room or maybe you were standing outside, and all of a sudden, the ground started moving. It was crazy. And you're like, what is going on? Ah! Yeah, it can be really scary. And for some people, it can also be very deadly. Now, what I mean by the Earth's surface, that's basically the ground that we're standing on. And tectonic plates, I'm going to explain what that is in just So how do tectonic plates work and where exactly are they located? Well, the tectonic plates are located right below the ground right where you are sitting or standing right now. And you may not realize it, but the tectonic plates, they're moving. And they're moving very, 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 very slow. They're moving at about four inches per year. So they're moving fairly slow and they're moving in all different directions. Some tectonic plates are like this. They're basically moving together in the same direction. But then you have some tectonic plates that are literally moving in opposite directions. So this one will be moving towards you. This one could be moving away from you. Sometimes they actually crash into one another. And depending on what happens, when that happens, sometimes you can actually get earthquakes. Now, earthquakes can also happen also as a result of volcanoes. When they erupt, a lot of times you get a lot of energy that happens, and that energy needs to be released. It's the same thing for when these tectonic plates, when they come together and they crash into one another, right? Because as you know, whenever something crashes into something, well, there's an opposite reaction, right? That energy has to go somewhere. And depending on how strong that interaction is or how strong that volcano eruption is, the damage can really vary. Sometimes you can have damage that looks just like this, where there were barely any buildings standing you have damage that quite honestly is pretty minor. It's only a couple of cracks in the street or maybe there might be a big hole that is in the middle of the street. Now, earthquakes can cause a lot of damage. I mean, we're talking billions of dollars. Sometimes they can also cause maybe about 20 or 30 bucks in damage. It really depends on something called magnitude, right? So magnitude is how we measure how strong an earthquake is. And a lot of times, people, when people think of magnitude, they think of that little squiggly line that happens every time an earthquake happens, right? And it looks similar to what you see right there on your screen. Now, the strongest earthquake ever recorded was in Valdivia, Chile, all right? And that is in South America. That's pretty far from where we are. But what happened was on May 22nd, 1960, we had an earthquake that was in the range of 9.4 to about 9.6 in magnitude, and nearly 6,000 people died, and thousands upon thousands of people had been left homeless. Now, even here in the United States, uh, we actually got damaged from this because of something called a tsunami, which in a couple of lessons, I'll explain how they happen. But for the most part, because of so much energy that existed in the water, it basically was forced to move outward. And so there were various parts of the world that were impacted by this earthquake off the coast. 
Now, earthquakes happen all of the time, but usually they are so small that you can't even feel them. Sometimes it'll just feel as though a truck may be driving by your house. But for the most part, most earthquakes, again, feel. Now, how are earthquakes measured? Well, they're measured in pretty much two ways. There's a couple of different ways, but there's really two more popular ones. There's something called the Richter scale, and the Richter scale basically measures the energy that's released. And then you have the moment magnitude scale, which is based upon the Richter scale, but there have been a few upgrades to measure the intensity as well as the energy that has been put on an earthquake. Now, the Richter scale can range anywhere from zero to upwards of 10. And depending on what that number is, is how strong that massive earthquake might have been. Now, the higher the number, the more likelihood that there was a lot of damage. So if you have an earthquake that was a, let's say 6.0, that probably means that there was a lot of damage that was done. Whereas if it was only a 1.5 or 2.0, probably means there wasn't really much damage. Then again, as I mentioned, we have this thing called a moment uh, magnitude scale. And that is what you're looking at. And basically what happens with this is it just measures a lot of the energy and, and the shaking that happens as a result. And for each number, it basically goes up by a certain amount because again, we're talking about energy and whatnot. So we do have earthquakes here in Ohio. We have earthquakes in every part of the country, but most people, when they think of earthquakes, they really think of California but we can actually get them here too. Uh, they can actually happen in the Caribbean. They can happen all over Asia. They can happen in Europe as well. Now, usually here in Ohio, they're pretty rare, but when they do happen, they tend to make news. Now, you might remember the one that happened back in December off of East Lake. That was about a 2.6, uh, but we have had others that were a little bit stronger. About a year ago, we had a 4.01. So what happened here? Now, earthquakes are monitored by the U.S. Geological Survey, or the USGS, as many people refer to it. And usually within about five to 10 minutes, you can actually see it appear on their website, which is at usgs.gov. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time for them to upload it, but you can also see a history based on location of all of the earthquakes that have happened. So if there is a earthquake that happens, what should you do? Well, the first thing that you should do is don't get scared. It actually happens. It is a natural process that happens. And again, it all, it can happen anywhere at any time based on where those, to, where those tectonic plates are. So the first thing you should do, don't be scared. Second thing you should do is drop to the floor and try to figure out something that's going to cover your head in your body, likely a table, or maybe there might be a cabinet that you can jump into if you're small enough. Me, I can't jump into this, a cabinet. Uh, but you literally only have seconds to really do this. And the best thing that you can do is find something very quickly that you can put over your head. Maybe it's a helmet, maybe it is that table, maybe it's just your hands, because you don't know how soon that earthquake is going to Again, I mentioned this, get under a table if at all possible, because that's going to likely prevent anything from hitting your head. A lot of the injuries that we see from earthquakes are, are head injuries because things fall off either the ceiling or they fall out of a bookcase and they hit people's heads. We do see other injuries as well, but again, if for some reason you can't find a table, uh, get in the middle of a doorway. Generally speaking, the middle of a doorway is also a safer place as well, because even though things are gonna fall around you, usually there's nothing near a doorway. So, now if you're outside and you're lucky enough to be outside, make sure that you stand far away from any buildings. Why? Because when you have a earthquake that happens, you never know what could potentially be flying at you. So, and I'll use this bottle as an example. If I'm doing this to the bottle, what could potentially happen? Well, the cap could fly off. Yeah. And depending on how strong that cap is or how loose that cap is, it may go flying off. And it's the same thing for a roof. 
It's the same thing for potentially something attached to the building, like a electrical line or telephone line. You never know what could be coming out of the sky that may end up injuring you. So if you can, during an earthquake, if you can't run inside of a building safely and stand in the middle of the doorway, get away from the building and make sure that there's nothing around you. Now, the other concern that I also have during earthquakes is usually you will have some down power lines as well. Stay away from those power lines. And then the last thing is be aware of aftershocks. Now, aftershocks are what happens after the earthquake, right? Hence the reason why we call them aftershocks. They are earthquakes that can happen after the main earthquake. So sometimes you'll get, let's say a 5.0 earthquake. You could potentially end up getting earth, you could potentially end up getting aftershocks sometimes a couple of minutes, sometimes it could be a couple of hours, sometimes it could be days and even weeks. We actually saw that happen recently in Puerto Rico where there was a earthquake and they were continuing to have aftershocks several weeks later. You don't know what's going to happen. So that is why it's always important to have some sort of safety method and to talk to your parents and your significant others about the potential for an earthquake and what you're going to do. So this was a brief lesson about earthquakes. Uh, tomorrow, I'm gonna to talk a little bit more about where they happen the most. There are certain parts of the world where they do happen more than others. And why is that? We're also gonna be talking about how earthquakes have changed how we build our homes and buildings, particularly in locations where earthquakes happen a lot more than in other locations. Uh, there have been a number of communities that have changed how they design their buildings and what actually happens. In some parts of the world, you actually have buildings that are designed to move with the earth when it moves. It's actually pretty cool to see. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, short speeches or long speeches, I'd love to hear from you. You can drop me an email at jfrazer at wkyc.com. Or you can feel free to tag me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and even Snapchat at Jason Fraser TV. Hopefully you learned something with this lesson and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.